Hi, this is John Sowash, and in this video, you're going to learn how to create one on one meetings with your students using Google Calendar and Google Hangouts. Now, it's wonderful when you're able to connect with your students informally before or after class, but sometimes you need to have a more in depth conversation with them or um, assist them with their work, or maybe they have questions that they want to uh, connect with you with. Appointment slots allow students to pick a time that works for them and for you uh, to meet with you. Now this works very well in a traditional classroom. So on your planning period, you can make yourself available or after school and students can select a time or it works virtually. So if your students are not physically with you, if you're teaching in a virtual environment, students can connect with you through a tool like Google Hangouts and meet through a video conferencing uh, scenario. The key to either of these solutions and either of these uh, scenarios is Google Calendar. So let's take a look at Calendar and uh, set this up. Now the first thing I need to mention is that this feature called Appointment Slots is only available through a school G Suite for Education account. So if you're currently logged into a personal Gmail account, you're not going to see these features. You also want to make sure that you're using the month view on your calendar. So up in the top, make sure you select, uh, select month. I'm going to click on the 24th of March, and that's going to bring up the uh, add event card. Now, you're probably familiar with this, but you may not have noticed this feature called appointment slots. So I'm going to say um, office hours with Mr. Sowash, I'm going to call it. And I'm going to click appointment slots, and that's going to allow me to create um, a series of appointments on a specified date and period of time with a specific duration. So I'm going to say 15 minutes, and that is going to be uh, my planning period is 10:25 through 11:35 um, on. Tuesdays. Okay, so I'm going to set that. Now you can click OK if you want, but I'm actually going to go into more options to take a look at a couple of uh, additional features. So my time slot is ready, uh, but I'm going to make this a repeat event. I'm going to say that every Tuesday from now until the end of the semester, I'm available for um, appointments. So I'm going to go to the repeat option. Right now it's set to do not repeat. I'm going to change that to say weekly on Tuesday. And this is just going to schedule that out as far um, as I want. So I'm going to go ahead and click save and now you'll see kind of a funky new addition to my calendar. So we've got the appointment slots scheduled. Now it's time to talk about how do students actually pick an appointment time uh, with you. When you click on the event you will see this link right here. It says go to appointment page for this calendar. You can go ahead and click on it. Now that is going to take you to the page where people can select an appointment time. You need to get this link to your students. You can post it in Google Classroom. You can send it via email. You can put it in your syllabus. However you send links and information to your students, get them this URL. So I'm going to actually copy this and I'm going to jump into a student account. All right, so this is a student uh, Google Calendar account. I'm going to navigate to March 24th, which is when my office hours were created. And that's where I'll see right now there are four 15 minutes, 15 minute appointments available on March 24th. So if this student would like to book one of those times, they simply click. It knows who they are because they're logged in to their Google account. They can write some notes, description, what they want to talk about, what they need help with, and um, I'm gonna, they're going to save. And they've selected that appointment time. So you'll notice that it immediately removes that time slot from the calendar. So if another student comes to this calendar, they're going to see the three available time slots. Let me jump back to my calendar and show you what that looks like. Now that this student has made a selection, that appointment will appear on my calendar. And if I click on it at 1040, it looks like this student and their name will appear uh, on the appointment. I know who uh, has made that selection. Now, if you are teaching in a traditional classroom and they're coming to your office, you're good to go. They'll hopefully show up at 1040 and you'll have that conversation. If you're teaching in a virtual setting, there's a couple of steps that you'll want to complete. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click the edit button for this event. Okay, so Eustace has scheduled the meeting, but I'm going to add conferencing 
to the meeting appointment. So that will add a Hangout link that the student can join. So I will click it, they will click it at 1040 and we'll be able to have that conference in a virtual setting. Now this is one of two ways to enable the virtual meeting option. Okay, the nice thing about this is that only I and the student have the link to that meeting, and so no one else will be able to join or barge in on our conversation. That's good. The bad news about this is that I have to wait till Eustace schedules the meeting, and then I have to add uh, the Hangout link uh, to it. So I'll click Save. There is one other option that you can consider. This one's a little more convenient, it's a little less work uh, to do. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to Google Meet. I'm going to create a new meeting room. We'll call this office hours. And really all I'm trying to get is the link. Okay, so I'm just trying to grab this link right here. I'm going to grab it, copy it, and then I'm going to hang up and close that meeting. Okay. I'm going to go back to my office hours where I set that up and I'm going to add that link in the description box. Okay, so link to virtual office. This is a little bit more convenient for me because I put the link in. We're going to use the same link for every single appointment from here until the end of the semester. Every student will have the same link and be able to see it. So I'll click save. I'll do all events and that link will be available. Now I'm going to go back and pretend that I'm a student. I'm going to click the office hours uh, button and uh, pretend like I'm scheduling a meeting again. But this time I'm actually going to see the link. It's like, oh, that's where I need to go um, uh, to schedule that meeting. That's a little more convenient. It's less clicking. You set it up one time and you're done. The only negative, the thing you just do need to be aware of is that because that link has been posted publicly, anyone could potentially join and barge in on that meeting at any time. Now, they're not going to be sitting there silently listening. You'll obviously know uh, when they arrive. But if you do have like back-to-back -back meetings, it's potential that they could overlap a little bit. Could be a little awkward if you're talking about something that's a little sensitive or uh, private in nature. Um, you may not want to do that. You may want to create a separate link for each of the meetings. So either option is available. Do whichever one you feel is most appropriate for your situation. As you uh, teach your students, uh, either virtually or in a face-to-face -face environment, I hope this little tip for office hours will help you connect with them um, and help them individually.